This is Heresy, the Miniature Wargaming Talk Show. In this video, we're going to be talking about the five most broken things in Legions Imperialis. First of all, we're going to talk about how to use the information I'm about to give you for good rather than evil. We're going to talk about those five most broken things and why they are a bit of a problem in the game. And then also some ideas for players or TOs, tournament organizers, on how you might want to fix these issues. But before we do that, if you enjoy the show, please do like and subscribe. Drop me a comment down below. And do join us on the Heresy Discord as well, which is linked in the video description below. And now on with the show. So the knowledge that I'm about to give you and what I'm about to say, you can use in, in a number of different ways. The idea is not necessarily just to use this for benefit and to make your army a bit silly. And I'm always curious to see how many people watch the video and listen to me talk about this before they comment on how we shouldn't talk about things that are so broken. So number one, obviously, you can spam these things. You know, that's a thing that you can do. If you want to play competitively, sure, fire away. The other way you can use this is you can play less of these things. So knowing that these things are a little bit overpowered, if you want to have a good game and you want your opponent to have a good game, you can try to do less of these things. You can also house rule them to try to fix them. Or if you're a TO, you can put things in your pack to consider fixing these things if you agree with them. And just generally, this kind of information lets you have better discussions with your opponents and your playgroup about what you consider good or not good, depending on the style of games that you want to play. Coming in at number five, we've got the Velatari and the Karanite Ogres for Solar Auxilia. So these units are just inordinately powerful in melee, and this is due to Rend on these units and having good close assault factor to start with as well. Mechanically, this is fairly broken because when you fight in a combat with one of these stands, they effectively auto-win. Maybe not quite auto-win, you know, dice are still dice, but you're not far off, and across a lot of stands in a fight, you've got a very strong chance of knowing what the outcome is before any dice are even rolled. But this is also broken thematically from a fun point of view as well. Space Marines going into combat against some Ogrins or some humans with power axes and just auto-losing doesn't really feel great, doesn't look great on the table, it's not a good gameplay experience, and I don't think that these units are great because of that. Now, there's not many ways to deliver these units today, there might be more in future when they get some different transports, but they do have Pioneer Company, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. So these are slightly lesser offenders than some of the other things on, on this list, but once they do get into combat, you know, we could definitely be having better games at that point if these were started a little bit differently. Coming in at number four, we've got the Lehman Russ Vanquisher. Now, these have got a very powerful gun. It's got two AP and armor bane, which is such a good combination. It means even things with a two plus save have only got a 25% chance of saving a hit from these. Anything with a three plus is basically never going to save. It's just crazy powerful. They come on an efficient chassis as well. so. It's not like this is coming on a very vulnerable tank destroyer style thing. It's coming on a 2 plus armor save that only costs you a little bit more than 40 points to buy it. It's super efficient. Now the range on these has a big compound and effect as well. They're not just long range at 32 inches. It's so long that a lot of units can't even reach them with a move and shoot. You know, your average tank with a LAS cannon that might fire back at these can't even move and shoot at them when they're shooting at the longest range. So they've got the huge ability to maybe have two shots against an opponent tank before they're even in range and to snipe things from across the board. So that's also a crazy compound and ability for them. Now, adding on top of this as well, these are very spammable. So it's easy to get tons of them in your list. The detachments of them are very big. There's loads of slots you can get of them. It's not like they're restricted or hard to get as well. They can come with their own tank commanders to get around the chain of command rule too. They sort of make other vehicles in the game a little bit obsolete. So in their own army, when you're list building, it's difficult to, to figure out why you would take any tank other than these. Even the other auxiliary tanks that have demolisher cannons have a very specific role in using their demolisher cannons. But if you ever intend to shoot things, these are just better at it. And it makes your list a little bit boring. And the same for the opponents as well. Whatever tank you're bringing, you know, if you're bringing Predators, Sakarans, Kratos, even anything like that. These are just better than all, and they beat all of them in a fight, and not just by a little bit either. So even if the dice don't go your way, you're still going to 
easily win the fights with Vanquishers. Coming in at number three, we've got Solar Auxilia Flyers, all of them. The Thunderbolts are probably a bit less bad, but most of them are very problematic. These guys have just got bizarrely massive weapon loadouts. They get two wing weapons with either two shots and armor bane on the Hellstrike missiles or bombs that are two shots with AP2 that can also hurt structures. These are also usable against any target, like at least the Hellstrike missiles you would expect to be anti-tank. And that's not where the weapons end. They also get LAS cannons, bolt cannons, auto cannons with multiple shots, sky fire. They also come with their own built-in bomb bay when you get to the Marauders as well. They just have so many weapons, so many dice with such high power and AP that it just gets a bit crazy. They're also cheap at 85 points and spammable as well. You can add three to each of these units, at which point they get even cheaper. The formations have got one, or in the case of Pioneer Company, which is already great, two uh, support formations. So it's super easy to spam loads of these. They're just so point efficient, and to give you some idea of how point efficient they are, compared to the Marine equivalents, they are 50 to 100% more damage per point. So that is they do 1.5 to 2 times the damage per point of the Fire Raptor or the Thunderhawk gunship. Now, the Thunderhawk and the Fire Raptor do about the same damage per point as a Predator. So as I was first reading through the book, I thought, okay, so Flyers are about the same as Tanks in terms of offensive output, output for their points. But, you know, they can be a bit more maneuverable, come on where you want, only really vulnerable to anti-air weapons, etc., when you get to the Imperial Guard ones, you just look at the stats, you're like, why have these got twice the guns that they should have? It's absolutely bonkers how much damage these do for their points. Now, one of the counter arguments I hear to this when I talk about people, uh, talk about it with people, is they say, oh, well, you, you know, they only take one shot to kill them. That is true, but that assumes that you actually put them in harm's way. So, Hellstrike missiles have got a 30 inch range, for example. Bombs can be fired in the movement phase, so the only time they're going to get shot is by point defense, which makes it even harder to shoot them. Sorry, Overwatch, I should say, makes it even harder to shoot them. Anti-aircraft just doesn't always help, and even in the cases where it does, you can take so many of these because they are so point efficient. It kind of doesn't matter, even if some of them get shot down on the way in, what's left is still you know up to double as good as it should be compared to everything else in the game. You can also position flyers to avoid certain types of firepower as well. They come on where they want. They don't have to move their whole move distance. They've got good ranges if you're not using the bombs as well. There's lots of ways to mitigate or play around enemy anti-aircraft fire. And if your enemy has, has heavily invested into AA to deal with these, his AA is going to be less points efficient than your flyers. So you're still in the money anyway. Auxilia flyers double down on that on that range thing as well, you know, and being difficult to deal with with what I've just said. Bombs in the movement phase, range on the missiles. Marine flyers can do those things, but they're not as good while they're doing it, which actually seems fine. You know, the Space Marine flyers seem completely fine to me. They work, they're expensive, you know, some of them drop troops, that's good. The auxilia ones are just far, far too good. And you'll see, if you look around the internet, you'll see people seeing my, saying, my man of the match was my two Marauders or my Lightnings, and they killed half my opponents on their own, the, half my opponent's stuff on their own. The reason they, they've done that is because they're effectively half the cost they should be, which is just absolutely crazy. These things take over games. You really can't play too many of them if you want your opponent to have a game. They're just too good. They hit everything. Loads of their weapons don't care what the target is. They damage structures. They're, they're just crazy. And really, these need a fix for the health of the game, I think. Coming in at number two, we don't have a unit. We've got a weapon, the Reaver Warp Missile. Now, I think most people realize that this is a problem. It hits on a two, and you roll one dice for every stand in the unit that it's shooting at. So you get one attack per stand, hitting on a two, and it's got engine killer three. It ignores all saves, cover saves, void shields, and it can hit every model in the unit so if you shoot this at a warhound or a knight because it's got engine killer three on a two plus it will just kill it so that's a you know 200 and something or 300 and something point unit dead on a two plus or if you shoot at another titan it will take most of its wounds off on a two plus which is still amazing if you shoot at a unit of super heavy tanks or kratos something like that 
every single tank you roll a dice on a turp, it's dead. So, you know, three, four, five, six tanks in a unit, just all dead. It can remove most of a key infantry detachment if you wanted it to. So if someone puts 12 infantry stands in a structure, you just roll a dice, you know, 10 of them die. Not only is it stupidly powerful, it's just not fun. Like, there's no way playing against this is going to be fun. It doesn't matter that it's one shot. It takes a massive chunk of your opponent's army off the table in one go with absolutely no answer. It's also got a massive range, obviously, as well. It did have an FAQ in the small FAQ we've had so far, which was making it uh, not roll one dice per wound that the enemy Titan had, you know, which would have been, uh, which would have meant it auto one shot at every Titan in the game, basically, with Engine Killer 3. But that hasn't really fixed its other problems, you know, of taking just units and smaller Titans off the board. It feels like this weapon was probably written in, in a rush. Maybe it wasn't play tested. No one's really read it. It's just silly. You know, why does it have an AP value when it ignores all saves anyway? You know, it's it just doesn't make any sense. This is this is a mistake. It's an accident, and it needs to be sorted. Again, I don't think it's a thing that we should have to deal with in the game, even though it's only one shot. doesn't matter. And then finally, at number one, the most broken thing in the game today, in my opinion, is Infiltrate as a special rule. Raven Guard, Alpha Legion, and Solar Auxilia Pioneer Companies apply this. Now, you remember when we were talking before, number five, those Solar Auxilia Assault Units were at least the only thing stopping them being completely silly is you've got to get them there. Well, if they infiltrate, they're there on turn one, and all of a sudden they are super, super, super powerful. The main problem with Infiltrate, it's powerful in too many dimensions. It does too many things. Firstly, the the allegiances we've just mentioned give it to far too many detachments. So it's not like you just get to infiltrate one thing. You get to infiltrate effectively everything or certainly a huge amount of things that make this kind of silly. Because it works on infantry for most of those things as well, you can use it on stuff like rapiers, which are very short range but very powerful and very cheap guns. You can use it on tarantulas, which normally can't move at all, which kind of breaks them, really. Where this gets even more problematic is it means you can start on the midfield objectives, and this is an objective game. Taking objectives off people once they've already got them is hard in Legion's Imperialis. So you can start on the objective, you can start right in front of your opponent's deployment zone. You know, you can put a bunch of stuff on objectives and then just block your opponent in the deployment zone. And rather than having a good game of Imperialis where you're going back and forth fighting over objectives, you just lock the game up from turn one. You know, the opponent never gets out or takes too long to get out of their deployment zone. You've already got such a command and lead. The game's kind of over. It also lets you deploy most of your army after your opponent's deployed their whole army as well. So infiltrate deploys afterwards. So if you have got this on a large portion of your army, it means you can see where your opponent goes. And if they spread out in a reasonable battle line, you can concentrate all your forces on one side of the board and then just crush whatever's there. Or if they concentrate in one area of the board, you can potentially go you know put a couple of things on the objectives that they've left alone and concentrate all your forces on the ones where they're going to fight you get perfect knowledge in deployment which is so powerful now normally in games workshop games with infiltrate infiltrate has some kind of risk because you don't know who's going to go first and if the opponent goes first all your infiltrators are out of position unsupported and will often die in the opponent's turn one well that doesn't work in this game because you alternate activations there is no risk to just deploying your entire army all the way up the board on turn one. Ultimately, this completely breaks scenario play. One player's got all the objectives. We effectively turn the game into an attacker-defender scenario with no advantages or counterbalancing factors for the attacker. One player's also got that perfect knowledge of deployment. It's very difficult, and we've tested this already, it's very difficult to lose a game playing Raven Guard or Alpha Legion. It's very, very difficult if you know what you're doing. Now, sure, if you don't push this to its limits or you uh, have a super bad day with dice or something like that, then yeah, okay, maybe. Or if you're not as good as your opponent, maybe. But assuming you're even kind of equal skill, you even sort of know what you're doing with this, it's really hard to lose a game at all just by choosing one of these factions as your faction. And for that reason, I think infiltrate in these armies is the most broken thing in the game right now. So how do we fix these things? Well, in my opinion, there's, there's two things we're looking at here. There's how Games Workshop might fix them, which we can hope for, but you know, don't have a lot of hope for going by previous experience with other games. 
And then there's the way that tournament organizers or people running events can fix these. If you're going to fix these at home, you can, you know, with house rules, you can take some inspiration from this, but you can do whatever you want in that situation. So I'm just going to talk about how I think GW should do it and how I plan to do it as a TO. So for Solar Auxiliary Assault Units, GW just needs to make Ren sensible. Maybe it's a re-roll instead of an extra dice. Maybe it lets you roll three dice and choose two, something like that. For TOs, there's no easy short-term fix to this, so I don't think TOs should ever change rules. The ideal thing for TOs is to make minimal changes or maybe ban things if they're too powerful. I don't think you can change a lot of this because there, there aren't really any alternate units solar auxiliary you can take right now, and it would cause too many problems. So I think right now we should leave these alone, and some of the other changes on this list will hopefully make them a bit less egregious. Lehman Rust Vanquishers, I think, need to lose Armor Bane. Armor Bane is just far too powerful a rule. And what you see repeatedly also with the Flyers is how things with Armor Bane just aren't pointed appropriately for it. It's so powerful in terms of maths. I don't think when it's been designed, that's been well understood. And I think these really need to lose that. But even if they did lose Armor Bane, they would still be amazing because of the sheer range that they've got. I would like to see them go, go down to something like maybe 28 or something like that to make them a bit more balanced. But even just removing Armor Bane would be a good start. For a TO, I think you could potentially leave these alone and it would maybe be okay, but I don't think you will still feel that when someone brings 30, probably. What I would probably do is cap the number of vanquishers that people are allowed. Maybe 5 per 1,000 points. Maybe even 10 per 1,000 points, although I, I don't think that really helps with the spam. Normal Russes are still excellent, I would like to point out at this point. A Russ with a normal battle cannon and a 2 plus save is a fantastic unit for the points cost for it. So no player should have an issue with this really. But I do think this is worth keeping an eye on as a TO and maybe considering if this becomes a problem doing something about it. Solar Auxilia Flyers, I think Games Workshop just need to fix the numbers on them, really. So the wing weapons, I wonder whether they were meant to be one wing weapon with two shots or two wing weapons with one shot each rather than two and two. I think, really, if you fix the wing weapons, reduce the shots down, the shot count of them, and then brought the cost up of most of these Flyers to about 100 points or something like that, I think that would probably do the job. They just need rebalancing to make them less efficient and they again they will still be very very good even if you do that what i'm saying there they will still be more efficient than marine flyers as well so i think it's a very reasonable ask for tos i think that you probably need to cap flyers to one model per 1k now that might seem extreme but bear in mind these flyers are literally half the cost that they should be so solar auxilia players are getting a 170 point unit for 85 points when they buy these so I think you need to be quite aggressive if you're going to try and do something to to combat this. Now, that obviously doesn't include Arvis Lighters, so you need to write your pack appropriately. And to be fair, if you're going to do that, you also need to cap the Space Marine equivalent too. Reaver Warp Missiles, I'm not even going to try to tackle this. The warp rule and the stats on the weapon just absolutely don't work, and no amount of tweaking is going to fix that. They need a complete rework. My opinion as a TO, and what will be going into my pack, is that we just ban them. Luckily, there's lots of other options Reavers can take. Reavers are really good. They don't need warp missiles to be good. We're just going to ban these until such a time as Games Workshop do something about them. And then finally for Infiltrate. Well, Infiltrate in kind of the same boat. It really needs a complete rework and rules changes, which, as I've said, I don't think is really a TO's place to do. The problem with this is I think if you don't do something about it as a TO, every event will just be... You know, the one guy that brought Raven Guard having three free games and all of his opponents having really dull games. So I do think that despite this being a thing that I would like to not have to do as a TO, I do think Infiltrate needs something done about it. And that's why I'm going to mark this danger zone area. This is something I would not like to do, but I'm going to do it because I think it's needed, is to replace Infiltrate with forward deployment until it's fixed. Now, obviously, you could do other things. You could say only infiltrate halfway up the board. It doesn't really solve the objective problem. It doesn't really solve the deploying your whole army after your opponent problem. I don't think there's anything you can do with infiltrate that isn't just going to look like a ham-fisted change and a TO doing his own thing. So I think the best way we can do this using existing rules in the game is just say for the time being, infiltrate to replace with forward deployment. 
all the Raven Guard players, Alpha Legion players, Pioneer Company still get a really powerful ability. And I would still say personally, in terms of tiers, I would still say they would be the best Space Marine Legions in the game, even if they were just forward deployment, which gives you a bit of an idea of what I think of them if they have Infiltrate as well. That's how I would fix it, and that's how I'm probably going to fix it for the time being until hopefully Games Workshop can sort it for us. And that's the end of the show. I hope you found it interesting. I hope you guys are looking at how to fix these things because what we really don't want is new players coming into the game, people starting to play it, and finding they just have bad experiences because of a few bits of the rules that could have done with a bit more work. Please do leave me a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content and drop me a comment down below. Join us on the Heresy Discord community as well, which is linked in the video description. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.